So, hello everyone and welcome to today's LRD webinar. I like big searches and I cannot lie. We apologize for the pun, but it had to be done. Uh, today, my colleague Pete Ramsey is going to be walking us through the wonderful world of building search strings. Slide. Just as a reminder with some logistics, um, today's session is being recorded and will be shared on our YouTube page um, as soon as we are able to get that up, hopefully this afternoon. Um, if you pre-registered for this event, you will receive an email with the recording link, um, which you can watch on your own time or feel free to share with others. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to put them in the q and will, or in the chat section, I will be monitoring that. And we will also have time for questions, both recorded and unrecorded at the end of the session. Um, so again, welcome to today and Pete, take it away. All right, quick sound check. Yeah, you are good. I'm good. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'm good, but here I am. Um, hello, my name is Pete Ramsey. Um, you'll find me as timothy.ramsey at udc.edu. Uh, so Timothy Peter is my full name. Um, Timothy Peter Ramsey. So I'm here today to talk to you about saving time as you search for information. Um, so let's, let's start with a bit of an introduction to why this matters. So uh, as, as you think about the world that you live in, uh, it, it's impossible to miss that people generate an enormous amount of information. Uh, and not only do we have more information than ever in history, but we have fairly easy access to lots of it, right? Uh, so there's so much stuff out there that sometimes it's really hard to get to the needle in the haystack to find a, a vital source that you need, especially for a college project. Um, and especially in college, because as a student or as a researcher, you're looking at complex topics, and frequently those topics are relatively new to you as a seeker of information. So today's, today's workshop is going to focus on some techniques that can save you time, that can save stress, and that can save your energy as you seek out useful information sources. So here's the overview of what we're going to cover. Uh, so I will show you how to focus your searches on a precise need. Then I'm going to show you how to build searches uh, for different search systems using something called Boolean search. And then finally, I'm going to show you a third technique of using refining tools to filter results so that you're looking at fewer things. So all of this is about spending less time evaluating the sources that you get from a search. Um, well, it's really about reducing the number of sources you get so that you spend less time evaluating. All right, step one. So focusing each search on a precise need. So for, for university projects, uh, think of each project as a meal, not as one search. So each search is one like nibble or one bite that you're gonna do. If you try to eat the whole meal in one search, in one bite, right? It's neither pretty nor is it effective. Instead, what we wanna do is focus each search on as small a target as possible. In other words, if we build a search that gets us just the bullseye of sources, we spend a lot less time wasting away looking at like, does this source fit, does that source fit, and so forth. So you wanna build a really focused search for each search. Now here, here's an example of how we might do that. So uh, this researcher has the topic or the research project of building a reading tutoring program in DC's Ward 6 for K to fifth graders. Uh, this is an actual topic I've worked with a student on in the past year at UDC. So I'm actually using a topic from a class. So as you're looking at this topic, uh, consider that you'll need to offer context, right? You need to have background information. Um, so here are two things that you might need for the background of your paper, right? Overall information about who the students are in Ward 6, you know, what the demographics are, um, what their status is as, you know, reading status, whether they're literate, uh, reading more or less, and so forth and so on, right? So overall information about them. Um, you might also need to look at a history of reading tutoring programs, whether in Ward 6 or in other places. So those are kinds of background information sources that you would seek out in individual searches. So this is already two different searches and you might go and find them in different places. You might search in different systems to get there. 
right? So the idea here is to focus the search on the really specific need so that as you're doing this project, you're getting to a narrower target. Uh, in addition to background stuff, you might need examples, right? So you wanna highlight an example in your paper or you, you read a news article or you see a news uh, story about a reading program and the successes it had. You can use that to spice up a project by drawing examples directly into it, right? So it's not just background information. It's not just making an argument. It is, here's one example of how this happened. So you, you would build separate searches on that. So thinking about narrowing your focus, you've got four different searches here already. We could go in and look at arguments. A lot of university work is dealing with the argument of, you know, why does a tutoring program work? Um, or why does this specific one that they tried not work? I mean, that happens too. Um, what are the effects of illiteracy or of literacy programs? Those kind of things are uh, the academic work of research. And university is teaching students how to think academically. So they're going to need sources that do that. And they're going to need to build searches that target each of those specific things. So We've got background, examples, arguments, all would require searches in different places. And then some, some projects are gonna need methods as well. Uh, so you might need uh, theories about education reform and how that happens related to literacy. Or they might actually need to define what it means to be literate, right? So some researchers will have those definitions in their work and you can cite those works in order to create a definition that is recognized by your audience. So finding all of these different kinds of things, this is six different searches on one project. So what I, what I teach students to do is not to go and try to find one search that meets the whole project, but to build narrow searches as they go so that they're looking at fewer results as they're thinking about, will this meet the need that I have in this project? This is called the, the BEAM method, B-E-A-M, uh, and it is used in a lot of universities. Um, I'm highlighting it here, and I could walk a student through this for a specific project as needed. Again, just the idea here is to be as narrow as possible when you build a search, because there's too much information out there. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to go and show you how to search for one of these. One of these specific needs here. And we're going to do that using a technique called Boolean search. Uh, you may have seen ands and ors in different search systems. So I'm going to show how to build those kind of searches. So this is a specific technique that I use um, all the time. Every day I use this. So search engines, uh, library catalogs, library databases, uh, they don't speak English. Uh, they're just math systems. So they use what's called an algorithm to match whatever terms you put in the system to results. So they're doing math formulas to actually do that process. Boolean search is a technique that kind of games that system so that it understands you better. So here's how to do that. So for this specific target, so part of that big project, we want to know the history of reading tutoring programs in DC. So what you do first, the first step is to take the main keywords from this search target and to list them out in one column. So we've got history, and I've put that here in the first row. Then I've got reading, I've put it here, tutoring, also the idea of programs, and the idea of Washington, DC. So this is the main ideas that are part of this search target. What we're also gonna do is put in some related keywords. So history, a synonym might be background um, or context. So there's different ways to say this idea of history. So we might use different keywords in different places. Uh, for right now, I'm just making a table of these to show you how to use them in a moment. So the idea of reading uh, could be expressed as literacy or even as the phrase reading comprehension. And please note, I've put quotation marks here because this is two words that I want to search as a phrase. So that's called a key phrase. So when you do the quotation marks, it forces the search system to find those exact two words in that exact order. I've done the same thing with Washington, DC, because Washington is also George Washington. It's also other things, Washington State. So we don't wanna get the system confused. We wanna use the exact phrase. Uh, so 
related keywords, tutoring, mentoring, coaching, programs, initiatives, interventions, those are those would be used in the literature uh, about this topic. So I've listed them here. One thing that's a little bit different is here we've got Ward 6 is more specific than Washington, D.C. So I'm thinking of this row really as places, right? And if we don't find results for the really specific Ward 6, we could be more general and use Washington, D.C. And if we don't find results on that, we could be more general and use urban or metropolitan or city or like those more general terms that kind of get to the same idea. So those are related keywords to the concept of uh, the place, Washington, D.C. All right, so I've got a table of keywords. So let me walk you through how to actually use this to build a Boolean search. So right now we've got the same table. So what I've done here is I've got that whole column of words in the main keyword section, and I've combined each of them with the what's called a Boolean operator, the word A-N-D, so AND. I've written it in all caps because that helps the system that you're using know that you're using Boolean search. So the result that happens with this is every result from this search has to have the term history, and it has to have the term reading, and tutoring, and programs, and the key phrase Washington, D.C. So if I build a search with each of those main ideas, that's what it would look like, just using and. Sometimes that will get you the results you need, and that's great. Sometimes you will need to expand your options, and that's where we're going to use the rest of these related keywords. So instead of only having history here, I'm going to use a set. I'm going to make a parentheses and put history or background. So now what I'm telling the search system is find me a result that has either one of those words. It doesn't matter which one, but it has to have one of them. So it has to have history or background. And I made a set. And it has to have either reading or literacy. And for this one, I just stuck to tutoring. I might build different searches that had mentoring or coaching, um, or I could put them together in a set with or as well. Um, I decided to leave it simple here, just and tutoring. And programs or initiatives or interventions, right? So this is just the same two techniques over and over again for each of the keywords. So the ors stay in the parentheses, and then you combine a new set of keywords with and. Or is always in the parentheses when you build a search this way. Let me show you a, a demonstration of how this will look. So right now, I have this search. It's the same search I just built on there. Actually, I had history or background. Right, so I just copy and pasted that. It's got the same thing all the way across here. Looks long, but when I run the search here on Google, I've got 11.8 million results. That is a lot of results. Um, it's one of the strengths and one of the weaknesses of Google is that there's so much there. So just, just demonstrating that this technique, it actually works here. And if I change this to be more specific, six in quotation marks, enter, then I've got a much more targeted set of results because it's a smaller place. If I make that more general with a new set of urban or metropolitan, when I run the search, now, instead of 11 million, I've got 80 million, because that's about the history of reading programs in any city. Okay, so you can customize your searches so that you get a smaller set of results. Again, the idea here is to reduce the number of results to the ones that you actually need so that you're doing less evaluating, looking through a list of results. 11.8 million, I would always advise somebody, uh, look at the first three or four results. If they're not right on target, change your search so that it's a smaller set because that's just too many. Some of the things we could do to make it smaller, I could take out some ors, right? So I have reading now instead of reading or literacy. So taking out an or means I have smaller things, smaller set of results. Inside one set, adding another or history or background or context. Now from 2.3 million, I go back to 11 million 
because I've got another or. So or means more and means less. All right, so the more ors you put in, the more results you get. The more ands you put in, the narrower set you get. So that search, uh, I did that on Google. I could do the same search on Google Scholar. Right, so I just took the search and I'm pasting it here. Uh, and this is a search of scholarly resources through the, the, the website Google Scholar, which indexes academic some academic books, a lot of articles from different places. Um, it also has patents and legal cases and things like that in here. Um, it, it's a useful place. It's also really big, so 135,000 results. The same search technique with the same search, copy and paste it onto library search. So on the library homepage. I can go to the search bar here, and I'm just going to punch the same search in there. Right, the same system works here, and I've got only 15 results here. Um, so what I did before, I had uh, too, too few results. I would upgrade this Washington, D.C. concept to a bigger one. It's hard to spell in front of people. <laughs> Right, so instead of DC, I'm gonna do urban or metropolitan or city. And that will give me a lot more results. So 59 results. Again, add or means more, right? So I can get more results. Um, library search is searching through the eBooks and books, through the articles and through library collections of other materials and documents. Uh, so this is things owned or directly accessible through library subscriptions. So 78 results there. It's pretty narrow. Um, I could make that bigger with other things, you know, adding more ors and so forth. Or I could even just take out a whole and set. I took out the idea of urban. So now I've got 585 results. Right, so the technique here, have the main keywords listed, combine them with and, and then as needed, expand each of those as a set with or. So that, that, in essence, is how Boolean search operates. Um, it's, it's not super complicated. It's just a few ideas put together. But you end up with these really big, long searches sometimes because you're searching complex topics. So a third thing that you can do is to filter the results after you've done a search. So we covered how to focus your search, how to use Boolean. Now let's narrow the results using filters. Um, a lot of search systems have filters, uh, and the idea there is to get a smaller set of results, right? So, and make sure they match your specific requirements. So I'm going to go back to the library search page in just a second and show you that. But first, so built-in filters are going to appear in different places in different systems. UDC search has a set of filters on the left-hand side. If you're on a mobile device, you'll notice a little filter icon, like a little funnel up at the very top. If you click on that, it'll bring up the, the filter options. Uh, but on the web page itself, they just appear on the left-hand side. Um, so the main ones at the top of there are availability. So availability is super useful if you want to um, see things that are, for example, available online. Uh, sometimes you'll also see in the library or available in the library. So that's physical books that are in the library. Um, you can limit to peer-reviewed journal articles. So when you have a project that says peer-reviewed, you just check that box and filter out everything else. Uh, super powerful and helpful. And you can also see journals that are published with an open access publishing model. Yeah, I'm glad I put the funnel icon there. I saw in the chat somebody mentioned they didn't know the funnel icon melt filters. Yeah, so it's it's funny what iconography does nowadays. The, the disk icon, that means save, that none of the students nowadays ever used an actual disk is really fun. Yeah, so every 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 different platform we use, all the different databases, you know, from the company EBSCO or the company ProQuest, they have search systems that put these filters in different places. Almost all of them have this set of filters, though. So we'll have the creation date, which is when things were published. So if your topic is 
you know, up to date health related, you're not, you're not going to want stuff from the 1970s, uh, unless you're just doing background research. But if you want the cutting edge pieces, you can change this to like the last two years. Um, or if you want to see information from before COVID, you could restrict the end date to 2020 or 2019 so that you only see stuff from before that period. Uh, you can also choose resource types. So if we're doing examples, like I was showing you a minute ago, and you want the example part of your search, you could select newspaper articles and just see the news articles that match these keywords that we used. Uh, and finally, there's a subject filter as well. Now, subject's a little tricky, but it's also really, really powerful. So each of the sources in the search that I ran when I got this, um, each of them has keyword tags or subject tags that they receive. So when you select one of these, what it's doing is it's looking at the set of results I have. So this was probably like you know, a couple hundred results. Um, and it's saying 26 of those sources have the tag education. So now if I select education and I filter for that, I will only see those 26 sources that had that tag. Uh, so it's really powerful, right? To get right to the exact set of things that you want. Uh, these are powerful. Google doesn't have very many of these. So Google is also, it's huge. We showed that it was huge. And it has some things that the library doesn't have. So it has like government data and information like that. Uh, a lot of statistical sources that we don't necessarily put in the library. It has a lot of stuff, but it's only got filters for like news sources, books, maps, right? So those things. And then if you click on tools, you can change based on publication date. Um, this one is not really a filter. It's more, it changes how the algorithm interprets your keywords. So I don't use that one hardly ever. Um, but anytime is is a way to change from any time to the past year or the past week. Um, and the publishing date is what that's about. So let me show you live for a second, this built-in filter with the search that I was doing a moment ago. So on UDC search right here, I've got these 585 results. Now imagine for a moment, I don't want to go to the library because I'm working from home. So I apply the filter available online. And now there are 10 fewer things. I don't have to think about those 10 things that I would have to go to the library to pick up. So now I've just got that. Um, earliest one is from 1962. Uh, for the history of tutoring programs, that's probably fine. But let's just imagine for a moment that I want the last 10 years, right? So 2012 to the present, apply that filter. That got rid of like half the results I had. So half the amount of thinking. That's a good outcome so far. Now I'm gonna do resource types. So I can click show more and see what else here. Uh, I'm gonna select two of these. We're gonna do articles and book chapters for right now because book sounds long, newspaper articles sound distracting. I'm not looking for that piece. So I'm selecting two specific types, uh, doing that intentionally at different types at different points of need. Uh, so if you need background information, books might be better. But for right now, I'm just gonna show you those two. So I started out with 585 before I started filtering. Now I've got 165. Much narrower set. I could, you know, blaze through 165 uh, titles and see if that's really useful or not. Um, or I could go here and still make it even narrower. Right. So the top 20 subject terms we've got here. Peer tutoring is not what I'm looking for. So, so the program that I'm working with, let's say it's it's about um, volunteer tutoring. So I'm going to use hover over that and hit the red button to exclude peer tutoring. So I don't want the sources tagged with that one. Instead, I'm gonna select tutoring, intervention. That's fine. So that's gonna give me like around about a hundred sources, 85 sources, right? That matched all these different things. So first it matches all my keywords and then it matches the filters that I've used. And I've got 85 results. So that's a much smaller set. It's much easier to look through here and decide. Da, da, da. This one doesn't sound like it's got that much history. Effects, this one might have some of the history of the problem there. Right, and, and so I'm, I'm doing a thinking process that's much quicker and cleaner than if I had too many results here. All right, so to sum up quickly, three techniques for getting to a narrower, smaller set of results are focus each search on a precise need that you have, build a narrow Boolean search using and and or, and make sure the or is in the parentheses. And then, um, and or, you can actually do this separately. 
uh, refine your results using the filters that are built into the systems. And that is why I like big searches. I'm gonna hand it back to you, Megan. Yeah, thank you so much, Pete. That was great. You know, we as librarians, we do this all the time, but it's sometimes fun to watch your colleagues do it because everyone has a different method of searching and how they build. Um, it's an art, not a science. Um, and if you ever get lost, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our email is on the screen. It's ask at udc.libanswers.com. You can also ask for support through our online chat system, through appointments, both online and in person, and in person at the reference desk. I want to leave it open for questions now. Um, please feel free to either unmute yourself or put your question in the chat. And we will also include question uh, time for unrecorded questions at the end. And while we wait for questions to come in, I am gonna drop a link to our assessment form in the chat. Please let us know uh, how we did so we can continue to update our offerings and things like that for our webinars. Well, um... What I can say, uh, it was uh, quite informative. I do know you can also uh, use, uh, you know, Boolean and such. We normally like use it in, you know, some of the languages we use. And I can see the mathematical application of the, uh, the Boolean and such, even in uh, like how it works in a search engine. If maybe you are like uh, trying to filter out or look for some specific, uh, information uh still even with the use of the library so that was quite interesting to me mm -hmm. yeah and a lot more languages are, are being indexed in the search systems now so you can actually search in foreign languages as well so when i said the search engine doesn't speak english i mean you could use cyrillic characters in there with the ands and ors and it would function the same way yeah and even on the back end like in python we use like like boolean such a lot Mm -hmm. like the formula so yeah it's quite interesting cool yeah all right give it another minute um i do again want to thank everyone for attending today um this will this recording will be posted on our youtube page hopefully this afternoon feel free to share it out not seeing any questions come in so i am going to end the recording so we have time for any unrecorded questions